my name is Angie Samujapilo and I am a recovering perfectionist, okay? Guys, I second guess and I overthink every single detail. Hi guys, my name is Andrew Samujapilo and welcome to my channel. If it is your first time, thank you so much for joining us. I really do hope that you decide to stay and you enjoy the content. We chat about all things related to money and adulting in general on this channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome to the first video of 2022. I'm so amped and excited for this year, for the content that I want to share, the conversations that we're going to have. I'm really, really amped to share as much as possible and also to engage with you guys and find out what you would like me to talk about, etc. So without wasting any more time, today's video, I just actually decided to kickstart the year by talking about my personal goals so my personal goals my financial goals the goals that i have for the different aspects in my life and there's two main reasons why i wanted to start in this way the first one is because i believe in accountability if there's one thing that's really helped me achieve my goals along the years it's being accountable whether it's accountable to results accountable to goals accountable to people to things to systems whatever it is but I really like to hold myself accountable and, you know, put those um, goals down on the ground and make sure that there's something that is keeping me accountable to actually achieving them. The second reason why I wanted to share my goals with you guys to kickstart the year is because I really want to increase the amount of engagement this year. I want to interact with you. I want us to interact in the comment section for you guys to ask questions, engage, debate, you know, some of the things that I want to say and disagree sometimes. Um, and I thought, what better way to encourage you to do that then sharing a personal piece of myself to kickstart the year. So I'm going to try and put up the goals on the screen so that you have an idea of what I'm talking about and you can follow. But as for me, I'm going to be reminding myself by looking at my journal, which is usually where I document my goals for the year. Now, I've decided to separate my goals into three sections. The first one is uh, personal goals, financial goals, and also YouTube goals. Now, I've also got career goals and academic development, etc. But I thought, you know, let me just share these three core and main ones for the year with you guys. And then obviously, there'll be other things in between that I want to achieve, um, you know, that I that either come up along the year or that I've thought about, but didn't necessarily make it like an overriding goal per se. So I'm first going to go through my YouTube goals for the year. The first one is I would really like to upload uh, 50 videos by the end of the year. Now, I know it sounds a bit ambitious, especially because I've got a full time job, a side hustle and I create content as well. But I really want to upload 50 um, videos by the end of the year. And guys, this is a minimum, right? So. Um, you know, to over exceed my goal, I'd like to actually go over and above that. It's going to help me get cons um, stay consistent, um, stay abreast with what's happening and make sure that I'm delivering fresh content. I don't want to sleep on it. So I'm obviously going to uh, break down these goals into monthly goals and then weekly goals, etc. This is what you should do with all your annual goals to make sure that you are doing something consistently on a weekly and monthly basis in order to achieve that annual goal so i won't necessarily discuss this here but i'm going to break them down so first goal upload 50 videos for you guys by the end of the year the second goal is reaching 1000 subscribers <laughs> i was two ways about this goal because i never like to tell me if you are the same or if you share the, a similar sentiment but i always want to make sure that the goals i set up for myself are things that are within my control not another person's control Otherwise, I kind of feel like I'm setting myself up for failure. What do I mean by that? So I can encourage you guys to subscribe and I can upload consistently, but I can't force you, right? So it almost feels like I can do my part, but I can't really reach that, um, that benchmark without you guys doing something. But at the same time, I decided to keep it that way because number one, I really do want 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And besides that, there are certain things that I can do from my side to influence I'm reaching that goal amount, like reminding you to subscribe. I'm reminding you to subscribe right now. If you haven't subscribed and you've watched more than one video and you're enjoying the content, please do click that subscribe button. It is absolutely free. It comes at no cost. And my aim is to always save you money. So the content will definitely be worthwhile. But there's some things that I can do like that and, you know, being consistent and all of those things to reach that goal. So I decided to keep it. The third goal that I have is 
I really, really want to be more vulnerable on this channel. I want to be more vulnerable. That word has always been like a tongue twister for me. But I want to be, you know, a more vulnerable and I want to um, share more of myself and stuff like that. And the reason for that is because my name is Andy Samujapilo and I am a recovering perfectionist. Okay, guys, I second guess and I overthink every single detail. Let me know if um, there's some perfectionist watching this video, but I tend to really dwell on the detail more than I'm supposed to. It is great sometimes, but sometimes it just wastes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. And I want to remove that from the channel this year. So, for example, I want to be able to pick up my phone and record a video whenever I think of something, you know, and be like, oh, my God, that's really great to share. Pick up my camera um, or my uh, phone and, you know, record whatever it is that I want to record at that point in time without necessarily overthinking it breaking it down so there's some instances where i'll watch something on tv and i'll be like sure that would make a really nice topic but then i plan it and i overthink it and i break it down and i make sure that it feeds into the topic i'm speaking about that month and all of those things i will do that because structure is my thing but i want to be able to be more free um there's actually this youtuber that i watch and i really enjoy her content because she speaks about law but the way she delivers it, um, delivers the content is so chilled. So if she's on holiday, she'll record a video. Um, you, if she's in the car and a thought comes, she'll just record it in the car, which is something that I did today as well. I just decided to record this video without necessarily overthinking it. So um, I want to be more vulnerable. And the last goal that I have for the YouTube channel is I want to increase engagement. So I'm really happy with the other analytics like I'm happy with how much we've grown. I'm happy with, you know, how many views we get versus subscribers. But one thing that I really need to improve on is the engagement. So I need you guys to start commenting on my videos, um, you know, to start asking questions and engaging. Even if it's a simple, oh, wow, I never thought about that. Or, oh, that's cool. You know, let us talk about that so I can just get a sense of uh, where you are in terms of understanding. Um, and the only way I can really get that beyond you watching the video is for you to comment and let me know, is it a thumbs up or thumbs down? Did you feel differently? Did you disagree? You know, um, healthy disagreement and engagement is something I'm definitely up for. So I want to encourage more of that. Um, I'm going to need you to help me out here. But there are certain things that I've planned for the year that will also encourage you to engage. So definitely look out for that. And I think that marks the end of the YouTube goals that I have for the year. And then let's move on to personal goals, right? So the first thing I want to do when it comes to personal goals is I really want to work on a healthy work-life balance. Now, what I've found um, about myself, especially from introspection on last year, is that I'm very, I tend to be very excessive when it comes to things. So if I'm working on a specific project at work, I'll give it my all. I won't rest. You know, I'll put in weekends, after hours and all of those things. And that actually applies to the rest of my life. Like if I'm working on something, I tend to give all of my time, energy and effort into that one thing. And then sometimes the other things fall behind. And because I'm equally passionate about all of the things that I want to achieve, I need to make sure that I have a specific routine that allows me to um, you know, focus a reasonable amount of time to all of the things that I'm passionate about so as to not find myself, you know, being too um, excessive on one end and then lacking on the other. And that works for my personal life as well. I need to be able to take breaks. I need to go on holidays. I need to relax. I need to, you know, shoot content, but also relax on weekends, spend time with my husband, spend time with family and friends, um, you know, and also make sure that my work is on, a, a, you know, on a high level and I'm delivering on all the different aspects. I never drop the work nine to five ball because God knows that's an important ball. But with the other areas of my life, I definitely think that I need improvement when it comes to um, formulating a routine, uh, you know, putting enough time towards the different things and making sure that I'm not dropping the ball on the other things that I'm passionate about. Um, second goal that I want to do is I want to read 15 books by the end of the year. So I used to be an avid reader before, but I tend to find that as I go into reading for research purposes and reading for academic purposes, I dropped the ball when it, come, when it came to reading for leisure and reading for pleasure. And I want to pick that up this year. I want to read about things that are not necessarily finance related, but develop me as a person, um, develop me um, in terms of the other uh, interests that I have and the goals, specifically when it comes to Christianity, um, you know, 
and my relationship with God, I definitely want to invest more time in reading books that are aligned to that, just so that I am a wholesome person, that I am enriched and developed in the different areas of my life, not necessarily just the academic um, and the work life. The third thing I want to do is adopt an active activity, right? So this is important to me because I work from home um, full time. So I'm the type of person who wakes up in the morning, um, you know, does the whole brush your teeth. I don't really eat breakfast, but brush your teeth, um, take a shower, and then I get stuck to my desk the entire day. I'm talking, I do not move. I only move to have my lunch, which I make and I eat while working. So I'm not very active. And then weekends are content creation, attending events and all of those things. So I don't really have enough, like invest a lot of time in being active, like physically active. So I do want to pick, pick up an active activity, whether that's yoga, a sport. I'm not going to go to the gym route because... Yeah, I don't trust myself to stay consistent to that membership and actually use it for its value. Know yourself, know your strengths and your weaknesses. So I'm not going to join a gym, but I definitely want to, you know, pick up yoga, jogging, walking or any of those things for a healthy lifestyle. The last thing I want to do is practice mindful consumption. Now, this is very important to me because I also have a word for every year. And my word for this year is conscious i want to be conscious with the decisions that i make um the things that i consume this is social media um you know uh, consumption from a conversation perspective spending time with people and you know even from a diet perspective what i eat and what i drink i just want to be very mindful about what i take in and what i consume because i know that that can have a great influence on your attitude towards certain things on what you think about certain things and it can also influence your opinion so i want to be very selective this year about you know who i spend time with uh you know what i eat what i drink um, you know, what I consume from a health perspective and e even just from a lifestyle perspective overall, I definitely want to be more aware of the things that I involve myself in and that I participate in. I'm definitely excited about that goal. Okay, now let's speak about financial goals. What are some of the financial goals that I have for the year? The first goal is that I want to build um, a non-discretionary portfolio. So if you've watched my previous videos on the channel, you'll know that I um, believe in diversifying. So I don't have all my eggs in one basket. In as much as I do have investment knowledge and um, you know investment background, and I am in the financial services industry, I do believe that my financial advisor has a role to play. My portfolio manager has a role to play. But... I also have a role to play, right? So I used to be very involved in, you know, buying stocks for myself, uh, buying ETFs for myself, doing my own research when it comes to the different investment opportunities that are out there. But lately I've been slacking because I don't have enough time. So I want to go to my non-discretionary portfolio and just dust it off a bit, look at what stocks I have, you know, um, what financial instruments I'm invested in and do my own research. Uh, rely on other things, on my advisor and my portfolio manager, but to a certain extent, you know, also exercise my own discretion and do my own research on the type of things that I want to be invested in. The third goal that I have, which is a financial goal, is maxing out my tax free investment. This is so important and it's something that I picked up along the years. But with life happening, adulting, getting married, having a wedding and all of those things, I kind of slacked when it came to max, uh, maxing my tax free investment. So that's something I definitely want to pick up again in the new, um, you know, tax year uh, from March onwards. I want to make sure that I start contributing enough to max out my tax free investment by the end of the year. I have a video on that. I'm not going to explain why or why I think it's important, but that's definitely a financial goal of mine. Fourth financial goal is getting a financial review. So this is important and it's actually overdue, guys. I can't believe I still need to get to this. So I sorted out some fundamental things, but there's still a lot of work to be done. So some of you will know from my previous video that I am a newlywed, which means that my financial goals cover, um, you know, entire financial spectrum has moved and changed. And I need to make sure that I go in there and I make sure that everything is updated um, and whatever needs to change now that I have a spouse does change. I'm talking beneficiary changes and all of those things. Very, very important when you have um, a life instance or a life change um, that has happened for you to go back and be like, okay, I was single. This is what I had. These were my beneficiaries. Now I am married. I have a partner. 
this is what I need to change and update. So I definitely need to look at that. In fact, I think that's the first thing that I'm going to focus on when it comes to my financial goals is doing that financial review. Um, and then also saving towards uh, joint goals as well is something that I want to focus on this year. So obviously my husband and I have our own goals as a couple that we want to work towards, um, you know, that are quite significant. So I need to look at my budget as well. Look at, um, you know, my budget in consideration with the joint budget and the goals that we have. Look at my goals personally, the things that I want you to do and see, you know, what needs to go, what needs to stay, what needs to adjust it, given that we now have joint goals that we want to achieve for this year. So a, a portion of my budget will go towards those joint goals that we have. And lastly is holidays right i want to make sure that i also dust off that travel fund and that travel pocket that i have uh we all know that with covid and everything else holidays and getaways took the back seat so i stopped contributing towards mine because i had no desire to travel with everything that was going on and i had to cancel trips and stuff like that so i was very demotivated when it came to traveling but I definitely want to pick that up again, even if it's a long term thing when things are back to normal. But I definitely want to travel with my um, husband and I want to travel with my friends. I want to go back to those planned holidays with a local, um, international or whatever the case may be, depending on, on our preferences and our plans. I want to pick up that travel fund. And that's also one of my financial goals. So guys, that's what I have planned um, from a YouTube personal and financial perspective for the year. Please do let me know what are some of your main goals? What do you have planned? Trust me, I don't know, like maybe it's just me, but writing goals down and setting them out loud and saying them out loud, sorry, has really helped me stay accountable to them because obviously now that I've shared the different things that I want to do for the year with you guys, I'm going to come back towards the end of the year or even mid-year and be like, okay, this is how um, I'm doing with regards to the goals that I have. This is where I'm lacking. This is where my, um, you know, my challenges are. And the fact that I've put my goals out there literally for the world to see, um, you know, and hold me accountable to, it's definitely going to motivate me to make sure that I'm doing my part in achieving them. So I don't come back at the end of the year and be like, oh, I kind of scored zero out of 100 or like 10 out of 100, you know, because we all want to be successful and we all want to do better. Uh, please look out for the next video that's going to come up. It's going to be a savings challenge. I'm just waiting, uh, waiting your appetite so you do look out for it. I'm excited for this year. I think this year, especially where the channel is concerned, I want you to be an action year. I want you to be an engaging year. Um, I want to make sure that we are speaking and doing and we're not just taking in and not making the necessary steps. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. If you are interested in this type of content and you haven't subscribed already, please do consider doing so. And also don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.